You're now rocking with the pretty girl, the Aaron Lanise on DTL Radio. Yes, the pretty girl, Tierra Lanise, coming to you live from the Unruly Sprayground studio on this throwback Thursday. And uh, we have been celebrating hip hop for at least a year now because it's the 50th anniversary. But I told you guys I had a special guest stopping by and we are in studio right now. Introduce yourself. Hey, what's up? It's Ron Browns, a.k.a. to eat the boy. A-K-A. I'm here. Hey. Yes, you are. I'm and uh, you you actually made a lot of noise in hip hop. Tell them about like how you started. Like who was your first, Ooh. I would say, I ain't gonna say big bro, but who was the first person you kind of like got in the door and he kind of showed you the ropes? Um, shout out to Big Al. Big Al kind of um, introduced me to the gang on a professional level. Um, you know, I, I watched L. You know, he was one of the guys who got a, a, a record deal in Harlem, one of the few guys. So, you know, we would see him around, and, you know, that was big for Harlem. And then, you know, standing outside one day, I got an opportunity to uh, meet him. Like, he was just walking by, and I'm like, oh, yo, I got some beats. And the first song we recorded was Ebonics. Okay. So you work with Big L, and, you know, we in 2023 now. A lot of these youngins do not know Big L. That's not good. That's not good, right? I know 70s music. I know 80s music. I know 90s. You got to know your stuff. So I think that's what we going through right now when it comes to music. I think a lot of people don't put that work in to kind of do the research to figure out who has actually set the standard in music for certain things you know yeah. certain sounds and you are known for your sound like i'm not even gonna hold you before i talk about how far you've came from the big l situation yeah. i have to i have to you know i gotta play it right gotta play pop champagne i oh, gotta yeah, play let's it go. because a lot of people was introduced to you with that record on like a grand level yes and the clubs went crazy and at that point, I ain't gonna hold you. People was shot popping champagne. I wasn't, but when when the you song, wasn't? No, absolutely no. I didn't Just a have. Bit. I didn't have enough money to pop champagne. Oh. But guess what? I found it and I began to pop champagne. So <laughs> again, y'all, we have Ron Browns in the studio with us right now. It is Throwback Thursday, so why not get into this joint? Him, Jim Jones, Jules Santana. It's DTLR Radio. Your fashion, your lifestyle, your music. Yes. Popping champagne. Yeah, like I said, I, I was not. So we was talking yeah, a little yeah. bit during uh, the record plan. What was the inspiration behind that record right there? Like you said something mm-hmm. about, the, you know, the yeah, OGs. I, I was but. young hanging around the, the, the OGs in Harlem. And, you know, like you said, we was the, the Grey Goose era. Yes. And then you go hang on the block and the OGs is like, Yo, yeah, this is what we doing tonight. And they'd just be drinking champagne on a Friday night, Saturday night, outside. Oh, what's this? Let me get some of that. And then, you know, that was the inspiration. Yeah, you said something about clique, and I yeah. said, I, I didn't know what that was. I, yeah. I promise you. I, I didn't. didn't know at the time either. You was drinking it, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got acclimated for being outside. Um like I was saying, the inspiration behind the record was you hanging on a block with the with the big dogs. Yeah. But what was the process of making that beat? Because we you brought along a special guest with you, and he brought up a special point in that record, mm-hmm. the gallop. It was it was it was like that. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, like what? Like to why be did funny, you to be funny, to, to be pop funny, champagne. to be funny, to be funny, it was. You know, Fifty Cent had the song "I'm a Rider," and he was using the auto tune. I was like. Yo, if I could make some party with that effect, that'd be fly. So I got the effect, but I didn't know you have to really be singing on key. So I thought it was just like a plug and go. Okay. So I'm making a beat. I'm like, yo, it's not going with the beat because I didn't know you got to be on key and the scales. So I muted the um, instruments. Okay. <laughs> I muted the instruments, and then I was able to hear myself. So that's why beginning of Pop Champagne, you just hear what you would call kind of like bongos type of thing. And then I brung in the instruments. 
and that's how I was born. And it's history. Trying to figure out how to use auto tune. That's how I came up with the uh, beat. No, I love that because a lot of people think that just uh, because you already in it, you feel me? You've made numerous songs. Yeah. That you you got it. You know exactly what you're doing. Nah. Once you hear it, you on. <laughs> So what are some of like your learning experience outside of the auto tune experience? Like what are some of the things you learned on the fly? Um being in like like musically, like being in key. Yes. You know, being in key, what's off key, what's not, you know, um ah, so much I consume. Let me find out you don't wanna tell us uh the juice where, where you kind of tripped up and fell and then you had to get back up. Oh, um you going to give me one of those? No. Why well, we I can't really think about off top. I got something for you. Let's get into this record <laughs> right here. I'm pretty sure you're going to remember something after this. It's DTL Radio. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it, Ron. I had to do it because that was a pivotal moment. Yeah. In your career like you listen. You in the history books. 50 years of hip hop, you are there. Yeah. They they need to give me something. <laughs> they need to give you something. Listen, you got you. Come on now. <laughs> you you know how to move and shape. And uh speaking of, you sat down. Mm hmm You thought of an idea to respond to take over. No, I didn't. You didn't. None no. of it. No. None of it. No. Nothing. <laughs> you ain't had beat, nothing to do with it. The beat was the inspiration. Okay. Well, say like, that's let's what I'm that. saying. But uh, yeah. look, let's say that. Yeah, yeah the beat, inspir you know, was inspiration. And Nas, you know, I, I got, got a call said, oh, Nas, pick one of your beats. It was like some summertime of 2000. Okay. 2000. And, yeah, 2000, I think it was. Yeah. I was like, yeah, right. He ain't pick one of my beats. Get out of here. And then, because the, um, it was like, you know, from the summer, then, you know, June, July, August. And then I get a call in December. Nas wants you to come here, which what, um, he did to the beat. So I'm like, yeah, all right. So I go to the studio. Nas is there by himself. There's no team, no no gas, no amp. And he's very calm, relaxed, eating fruit. I'm not thinking he about to play. <laughs> it sounds like a scene record. from Belly just now. Yeah, I'm sorry, just, but yeah, go ahead. He's, just like, he's like, yo, play Ron the song. And I was like, he plays it, and I hear the F Jay Z at the beginning. I was like, wait, nah, I didn't put that there. <laughs> wait. Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the journey with you. <laughs> go ahead, keep, and, um, keep going, but we gonna yeah. talk about that part. So, and he plays, and I was just like, wow. And I always like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because, you know, this is my very first kind of introduction to the game, kind of sort of. You know, people who follow me know the Big L stuff, but Nas obviously was, you know, who he was at the time. And, um, yeah, it stopped it stopped the radio Absolutely. in New York. And it was like, you know, it was just they was playing these two records. Back to back. Back to back. And over and just over. Like, wow, this is... This is crazy. So, ah, oh man. I'm happy you said, like, nah, he got the beat, and that was the inspiration. Yeah. So prior to this whole thing going down, you had already sent Nas a, the, a pack. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, you know, at that time I was hungry, so it was like 30 beats on that. So he actually went through, you know, the whole, you know, 30 beats, and I guess that one kind of stuck out to his mood. I always tell people people pick beats according to they, how they feel that day. I agree. Because you might like something today and tomorrow might not like it or, you know, vice versa. Yeah. So, um... The vibe is definitely different and set on... Oh, how, how would I put it? In different areas. So, yeah. you, you, started, you started in NY, right? You've worked with Down South artists. What's the vibe of a down south artist versus a New York artist and and what are those different elements that they kind of bring out of you when you are trying to create? Um, you know, growing up in New York, you kind of, you know, you you breathe in the air, you're touching the frequency, you're going outside, you're seeing how people, you're going to parties, you're, going, you're seeing how people driving in their cars, what they're listening to, how they're reacting to certain things, just you know 
just the whole, you know, the aura of the city. I could kind of tap the frequency and know where the artists need from there. Jay Z actually could have had to eat the B too. Mm. But Do you want to tell us about that? How yeah. he could have had it? You said it to him? You know, his A and R sat with me. Okay. And I played it for him. And I was like, yo, get it to Jay Z. He took the C D and just walked out the house. <laughs> oh man. So, so Jigga could have had it. He could have had but like I said, it probably wouldn't have matched his mood at that time. True. You true, know? true. Nas was angry, so the angry beat matched. <laughs> Well, I guess, you know, sometimes those moods in the production work together. Yes. How did you feel when you heard the battle going on on radio, the back and forth that was happening that we that we spoke about? Yeah, it, it was a moment, you know. You know, people was calling me and, you know, walking up and down Harlem. It was playing out of cars. It was coming out of anything that had a speaker. You just... <laughs> <laughs> Like no exaggeration, you heard it. So you know that was a big. It was it was a big look for me. It was a big look for where I'm from because you know people who saw the process was like, oh, I he you know he finally he put in work. Yeah, he put in work to get there. So it was it was it was dope. Speaking of putting in work, um, you had records that hit film. Oh, I'll like, your head, boy. Like, yeah, like talk about. Come that's on, one of, that's one of the. That I've been seeing his tour. <laughs> it look like that been his biggest like wrecking on tour. So like, it's, it's been getting the reaction. Yeah, it's a clip that's been going viral with with Busta Rhymes, kind of like watching him performing, and he's just like bugging out to it. And at, people keep showing me, cause like, yo, when 50 perform, I whip your head, boy. Because I guess he got, like, an orchestra thing going on and everything yeah, I that mean, plays after, it. After you put in so much work, you better have some live yeah, instrumentation right? going on. <laughs> let, me, let me borrow the orchestra, 50. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I keep seeing clips from his tour and him performing, I whip your head, boy. And I'm just like, yeah, that, that was a job well done by me. You know? I, I'm happy you said that because I was about to say, <laughs> like, do you ever like really take it in and be like, I did a good job? Yeah, you know what? Now, now okay. looking at because now it's you know social media, you get to see people react. He got fire going up, smoke. He coming from under the stage. I think that might. I think he comes out to that record. I don't know. Uh, I think so. We gonna have to look because we yeah. we definitely support. You guys never call him. Yeah, you gonna go? <laughs> yeah, we definitely supporting that tour here at DTLR. So make sure you guys link up. And um, whenever y'all here, whip your head, boy. Go ahead. Yeah, that's record it and tag Ron because yeah, that's him. That's his work. He's put in a lot of work and he's still doing his thing. So one twenty one two seven. That is the block where these creations were made oh so you know 127 where lennox well, avenue I'm, you know i'm from huh? baltimore i don't know yeah 127 for lennox avenue Hall. okay yeah so mama love house mama love house yeah Aww. it's mama love house so, that's yeah. where everybody used to come and eat yeah and, and chill make noise while she at work <laughs> why she at yeah. work because you already know get too loud what y'all yeah. kids doing yeah, down yeah. there i gotta sleep yeah. i got work in the morning so, yeah, so um yeah, that's the block where um I mean, you know, that was the headquarters for a while for me and um I created Ether in there, Ebonics, I would be head boy, a lot of classics I create in there. I get crazy for Nicki Minaj I created in there. That make me want to do the Harlem shake. Yeah. I mean As it make, should. Oh, it was created it in Harlem. Sense. That's oh, crazy. you didn't know that. No, I just put I just no, put you can say you didn't know. It. I didn't. Remember, I just know. told you I didn't know what 127 was. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so. didn't know technically, but when I just played the song in my head and I started yeah. doing it, I was like, oh. Makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the block where a lot of um, those things was created. So, you a know, lot of being, love there. A lot of, mm. you know, we, we in the 50th celebrating hip hop. So true, true, true. The album, 127, is kind of like, you know, uh, a little masterpiece, I want to say. So and, a and little like, collection of things. Yeah, a collection. Okay. A collection. I am like rare. It's gonna be rare. Like 
Oh, so what I'm what I'm hugging right now is rare. Yeah, rare. Okay, cool. like fight. Don't let nobody take it. Absolutely like, not. Yeah. I got both hands on here. Yeah. I, so. Listen, I hope this is recording at this point because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm holding on to my records because court's standing behind me. I can't. I don't have eyes behind me, so I can't interview you and watch him. But I'm holding on to my records though. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know. with this collection, and I'm gonna step back from the collection just a little bit. Court sent me, cuff it. He sent me that. Oh, right? the remix. He sent me that. Oh, okay. And he also sent me Ag Bed. Uh huh. You been really showing out, like you know, if yeah. I would have did this record, this is how I would have did yeah. this record. I, you know, if, if you would have asked me like a year ago to remix on, I probably nah, I'm not interested. Mm hmm But then I felt like it was a, it was a when when Diddy was saying like, oh, R&B is dead and nobody. I was like, it's not dead. People not just doing it to the right music. Mm, so talk about it. I was move on. I like comfort and all that was the. I was testing it, testing the waters, mm -hmm. and then like they said in life, like you got to keep. It might not be the first one. It might not be the second one. Might not be the third one. Might be the fourth one. Might be the fifth one. That's why you got to keep doing it. So I kept doing the remixes, and then the move on one became the um, official remix for Diddy. So, look, you said you did the cuff it and there wasn't really, like, why do artists, like, make the music and give it to us? You making it for us. Yeah. I love cuff it. I played that cuff no, no, it more I'm than saying, I played the original cuff yeah, it. Yeah, no, I'm saying like, you literally. do it, that doesn't mean Beyonce is going to be like, this is the official remix. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Tiara plays it. Let's go. Let's see if she heard it. At all, much you know she heard it. Come on. You think she heard it? Her peoples was like, what, 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 what? Listen, you are. You put a song on Instagram for too many seconds, too long. They hitting up Beyonce like, um, um, did you approve of this? No, you didn't. Okay, cool. Your video is not being viewed in this. Oh wow. Dap dap dap. I be like, I'm a DJ. So according to you, Beyonce said, let that rock. She heard it. You said that. I play it. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I play it. Nobody. Yeah, we haven't, right. we haven't got like, a cease and desist. You're right. We they haven't definitely. got it. I play it. Like, well, I can pull it up right now, and it's in here. And they, Thanks, Beyonce. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying Thank it. you for letting me live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sounds good. Nominated for Best Collaboration. Yes. Got to move yes. on the remix. So we you need you to vote. That's the one. I need to vote. Send me the link. Yeah. Send me the link. Well, yes. Actually, Court, what's the link? What's the link? I need the link. I got to tell yeah, the people the they got votes. You got to go to MTV. Go to MTV.com MTV. MTV. and a vote for Gotta Move On Remix. remix. You the already Queens know. Mix. The Queens Mix. So we need all the ladies to like, get involved. I like what you did. I like yeah. what you did. Like yeah. All the Queens <laughs> to go vote so we could take this award back to Harlem. So this is a caramel latte vinyl. Tan and yeah, well, I gotta ask um, B Boy about that. Okay, where B Boy at? The, the, the marketing behind the caramel latte. He said he he he's, you said it's beautiful. No, but oh, look why? at it. I don't. If I open it, it's, it's so good. Yeah, you guys. You I know. got you the MP3. Coming. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna look at it when when I get it. But yeah. I'm, I'm not opening that way. Oh, it tells you. If, like if it's black and matte. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a tan and bone swirl. Ooh. You picked that. Wow. He don't even know what he be it doing. Sound fly. It sounds fly. Right? It sounds fly. It sounds fly. I'm good with the colors, color schemes. I'm no, good with color schemes. We agree with you. We just saying you yeah. don't even remember that. <laughs> no, I didn't know that it tell you on vinyl what color. No, I see it now. And on rocks this it says black see, and white. This your first time seeing this? Is no, no, no. I, this is my first time seeing first the time reading detail it? in the, the caramel latte vinyl. Okay. So what Rock says? Shout out to Rock this monster. Rock this monster. The, the other one that's behind one it. behind it. What's that say? Well, his doesn't have the color. That. It doesn't say black and white. So mine's is... Yeah. <laughs> now it's a okay, flex. So right. <laughs> so you're, so, so mine's you're, is a collective so item. You're so you're half... <laughs> You're half right right here, so all of them don't say it, so... I, yeah, see? Okay. All right. See, I talked to B-Boy. What's going on? I'm sorry, y'all. We really was well, just make, having a conversation outside of the interview, but don't worry about it. That's what happens right here on 
Pretty Girl Radio. It's Throwback Thursday. Ron Brown started. Thank you guys for coming through. Really appreciate you. Yes, thanks for having us. So, when, Court, he told me to ask you, where's the next tour stop? I was about to ask you again. Oh. I remember. Let's see. Richmond, Norfolk. Virginia, Virginia. Charlotte. Oh, okay. Charlotte, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. So, y'all hear that? Richmond, Charlotte, Atlanta. Ron Brown's is coming through. You got to gotta do your research. Go ahead and hit, hit up his page. On Instagram, okay. When uh, uh, go to his page on Instagram, check out when he's coming to visit you guys and get acclimated with the new music. But this one is dropping. Hold on, September eighth. The the tan and bone swirl was dropping when? Yes, yeah, September eighth. <laughs> Fatbeats.com to get a pre-order. It's on American B Boy. Fatbeats.com pre-order today. Today. Heard it first here, Pretty Girl Radio, CCLR Radio, your fashion, your lifestyle, your music. Your fashion, your lifestyle, your music. This is DTLR Radio.